Let's talk about the rate of convergence. <clears throat> Start the definition. Suppose that we have a sequence, P sub n. This is an infinite sequence we denote like this, it converges to zero, and we have another sequence, again an infinite sequence, which converges to A. Now if we can find a constant If we can find a constant greater than zero, which we'll call k, we denote this manner. So if we can find a, a, a constant k, which is a positive real number, such that the absolute value of a sub n minus a is less than or equal to k times b sub n. And again, this a sub n corresponds to this a sub n over here. This a corresponds to the limit over here. This b sub n corresponds to this sequence here. So again, if we can, if we can produce this condition, this inequality for large n, Then we can say that the a sub n sequence converges to A <coughs> with a rate of convergence. equal to big O of B sub N. And again, we pronounce this as big O. Okay. So again, if these conditions are true, then we say that the sequence A sub N converges to A with the rate of convergence big O of B sub N. So this tells us how quickly A sub N converges to A. Another way, another way to write this is that A sub N is equal to A plus big O of B sub N. Typically, B sub N can be written as 1 over N to the P power, where P is some non-zero or positive integer. So let's look at two examples. So example one, let's consider the sequence a sub n, which is given by this equation right here. Okay, A sub 1, we just get by putting in 1, so 1 plus 1 over 1 squared, which is 2. A sub 2 is 2 plus 1 over 2 squared, which is 3 fourths. And A sub 3, we'll do one more, is 3 plus 1 over 3 squared, which is 4 ninths. And we can continue this process. And what <clears throat> we see is that a sub n is converging to 0. So what we see is that this satisfies this condition right here. So what we need to find is we need to find a b sub n that's converging to 0, where we can bound the absolute value of a sub n minus a by k times the absolute value of b sub n. So what is b sub n? Well, we have to do a little bit, a little bit of algebra. So we're going to do a sub n minus 0 is equal to, and again, we pick 0 because that's what it's converging to. You'll notice again that we have right here, and you know, we're using the same right, equation. And again, this is going to be, if you like, this would be our 
A. This is our A. So that's what that's what A sub n is converging to, right? Okay. So again, we start with this expression right here, and we just do some algebra. So we take a sub n and write it in as n plus 1 over n squared minus 0, which is just absolute value of, absolute value of n plus 1 over n squared. Now, <clears throat> what we can show easily is that 1 is less than or equal to n when n is greater than or equal to 1. So again, we up here, you'll see that we're trying to show this inequality for large n. So for large n, this condition is true. So I can I can say that this is equal that this is less than or equal to n plus n over n squared, which is going to be equal to 2n over n squared, which is right, absolute value of 2 over n, which is 2 times absolute value of 1 over n. Okay. So this is going to be my b sub n, and this is going to be my k. So I can find a k that's right, that's a real number greater than zero, and I can find that of something here which depends on n, a b sub n. We also see that one over n converges to zero, so that satisfies the other condition necessary in our definition of rate convergence. So now we're ready to say that a sub n converges to zero. Again, I've, I've dropped the, all the notation. I'm just going to kind of abbreviate the notation this way at a, a rate of convergence to big O of 1 over n. Okay. Or if you like, another way to say this is that a sub n is equal to zero plus big O of 1 over n. Okay. Let's do another, another example. Number two, a sub n is equal to, let's say, n plus 4 over n cubed. So a sub 1 is 1 plus 4 over 1 cubed, which is 5. a sub 2 is 2 plus 4 over 2 cubed which is 6 eighths, which is 3 4, 3 fourths. And then a sub 3 is going to be 3 plus 4 over 3 cubed, which is 7 over 27, so forth and so forth. And this, you can show, converges to 0, which again defines what our, our a is. So using the same thing we, we did in, in example 1, we do a sub n minus 0. Again, we have 0 because it's converging to 0. That's what our a is. And that's equal to n plus 4, absolute value, n plus 4 over n cubed minus 0, which is equal to n plus 4 over n cubed. And again, we can do the same thing we did right here. Right? We know that for n for some n, for large n, that we get the condition that 4 is less than or equal to n, and that would be, I guess, for n greater than 4. So we can write this as n plus, we could actually do 4n or n, either one, over n cubed, which is equal to absolute value of 5n over n cubed, which is 5 over n squared, which is equal to 5 times absolute value of 1 over n squared. And we, we know that 1 over n squared goes to 0, so we have found our k, and we found our b sub n that's up in the definition. So what we've shown here is that a sub n goes to 0 at big O of 1 over n squared, or a sub n is equal to 0 plus big O of 1 over n squared. Notice that this, in, in example 2, that the order has a bigger power of n. What that means is that the second, the second a sub n, the a sub n that we calculated in 2, converges to 0 faster than the a sub n we calculated in 1. That shouldn't come as any surprise because in this in the second example, we have an n cubed to the denominator. In the first example, we have 
and n squared.